Hello children, welcome to the next session of the digital class. How are you all of you? Hope you all are enjoying these classes. So today let me start this session with a simple question. What is the question? Here it is from where do we get the food materials? So it is a very simple question isn't it children? So here you get food materials from plants and as well as animals isn't it children? What do we get from plants? You get fruits, vegetables and many other items, isn't it? What do we get from animals? From animals you get eggs, meat, chicken, etc. Isn't it children? So today we are going to discuss about the topic production of food from plants. You might have seen children in your surroundings different types of plants are present. Here you can see that Farmers, they will be growing same type of plants, isn't it children? So here, uh, what type of plants they will be growing? Same, for example, all the paddy plants or all the wheat plants or all the cotton plants, isn't it children? So development of same type of plants is called as crop. So let us see what is the definition of crop. So crops means nothing but when plants of same kind are grown and cultivated at one place, on a large scale. For example, you take paddy plant as there. So here growing large number of paddy plant in a particular area is called as crop. Is it clear children? So growing large number of sunflower or you might have seen growing large number of cotton plants in a very big area that is called as crops. Different types of crops require different climatic conditions. Isn't it children? And this process of growing crops is called as agriculture. So agriculture means so many things will be occurring here, isn't it children? From starting the leveling of land, plowing of land, providing water, providing fertilizers, manures, isn't it children? So all these, so you might have seen there different types of uh, things they will be doing. Here let us see there two types of crops are there. So what are two types of crops depending upon their duration? Duration means how much time period they will take. So some crops will be taking more time for maturity whereas some crops will be taking less time for maturity. Some crops takes a minimum of 180 days or more for harvesting. These crops are called as long term crops. Examples are jowar, red gram etc. And the second one is here short term crops. So here some crops take 100 days for harvesting and those crops are called as short term crops. Examples are green gram, black gram etc. Now depending upon the seasons also we will be growing different types of crops. Let us see here these crops they generally grow in rainy season. Those crops which are grown in rainy season are called as kharif crops. They are planted in June and they are harvested in October. Example are rice, maize, cotton and groundnuts. Now the next one is rubby crops. These crops they are grown during winter season. So here rubby crops are generally planted in November and they are harvested in April. Examples are wheat, barley, pea, grams are the examples of the rubby crops. Apart from this some crops are grown during summer season. Those crops which are grown during summer season they are called as Zaid crops. Z-A-I-D. Zaid crops. Examples cucumber, bottle gourd etc. Have you understood children? So how many types of crops are there? Three types of crops are there. What are those? Kharif crops, Rabi crops and Zaid crops. So on what basis they will be growing in different seasons? So scientists have studied this one and finally they have come to a conclusion that depending upon their flowering period, depending upon their flowering time, which again depends upon the duration of the night. If some flowers they will be flowering only if the duration of light is very long and some flowers will be flowering if the duration of uh, night is less. Depending upon these factors only the crops are grown in particular seasons. Paddy. It is most essential and staple food crop. Most of the South Indians we take our food as paddy. Whereas North Indians they take wheat. Isn't it children? 
Paddy is a crop which is grown both in Kharif season and Rabi season. Only Rabi crop is wheat. Wheat is grown only in Rabi season. Is it clear children? Now the scientific name of paddy is Oriza sativa. What is the scientific name? Oriza sativa. It is called as global grain. Why it is called as global grain? Because it is used all over the globally. It is used or consumed by all the people. Its cultivation has started in Mesolithic period that is uh, in Harappan civilization. This is grown as both Kharif and as well as Rabi crop. Uh, even China, Japan, there also this uh, rice crop is grown. India has the largest area of land under this paddy cultivation. Though we have largest area, but the production is more in China and Japan. Whereas our production, though we are cultivating rice in a very big area, but our cultivation or the production is somewhat less when compared to China and as well as Japan. Why there it is more? Because their practices are different. They are using modern techniques. Have you understood? So now we will be discussing in this chapter what are the steps followed for the growing of rice in agricultural land. So how the production of rice will take place? We will discuss this now. So crop production practices. So not only in paddy, every crop, each and every crop, it requires some production practices. Some methods has to be followed. What are those methods? See in this children, first one is preparation of soil, next sowing, next adding manure and fertilizers, irrigation, protection from weeds, harvesting and storage. Let us now study each and every practice in detail how it is followed. Preparation of soil. What is meant by preparation of soil? Preparing the land so that it has to give the crops. So it involves two steps, ploughing and levelling. What is meant by ploughing? Ploughing is otherwise also called as tilling. Ploughing or tilling. So it is nothing but it is the process of loosening and turning of soil. So it makes the soil loose. How it is done? It is done with an instrument named as plough. And plough, how it is made up of? It is either made up of wood or iron. What is the use of this ploughing? What it will do? It mix up the soil so, and makes the soil loose. If the soil is loose, automatically the roots will be going deep inside, isn't it? Not only roots, the water also goes inside. Not only water, air also penetrate easily. Understood? And not only that one, the microorganisms which are harmful, they will be expelled outside and they will die. Whereas useful microorganisms will go inside and they will be helping the plants to grow. It is done with plough only, isn't it? This plough, it is either made up of wood or iron. See here children, see in these pictures, you can see here, this is the wooden plough. Completely it is made up of wood and only here a point is present, that point it is made up of nail is present, that it is made up of iron. Now let us go to the next step. I said that preparation of soil, it includes two stages. The first one is ploughing and the second one is levelling. Let us see what is meant by levelling. After the process of ploughing has done, the soil will be having ups and downs. So to make the soil surface level, it is done with a machine called as leveller. So here in this uh, slide you can see here children, the leveller is of uh, either made up of wood or made up of iron. So wooden leveller is there and as well as iron leveller is there. What is the next step? Sowing. Sowing means what? Sowing means nothing but putting seeds in the soil. It is done by different methods. Either it is done manually or it is done by some machines. See children here coming to sowing, two types of methods are there I said. So first one is manually. Manually it is done by two methods. One is broadcasting and the other one is line sowing. What is meant by broadcasting? Just taking the seeds here in a plate or something else and just throwing it in the soil. This is called as broadcasting. Whereas putting in a particular rows, in a particular lines, it is called as line sowing. Seed drill. A hooper will be present. In the hooper, seeds will be kept and those seeds will be coming through the tubes and they will be falling in the soil. It is done with the seed drill. So good quality seeds, bad quality seeds, how we can know? For this, a small experiment has to be conducted. 
So, what is the experiment is that you just take some seeds and you put it in water. Some of the seeds will be floating and some of the seeds will be sunken down. And those seeds which are floating, they are of not good quality. They don't germinate. They have less weight. So, that is why they are floating and they are of not having good nature. They won't produce good plants. The seeds which are sunken down, that has to be collected and that has to be sown in the soil. Government is taking care to produce certified seeds so that they can take these certified seeds and they can use them and they can get more yield. Coming to the paddy, especially paddy plant, what they will do is, first of all, they will be selecting the area or the land. Now, the land which is taken, they divide it into small place, areas. So, they are called as madulu or kayalu. So, in that they will be growing this rice seedlings, plantlets will be coming. So, that area is called as nursery. So, after this nursery has slowly the plants have developed, they will remove these plants and they will be growing in the main field now. That process of transferring the plants from nursery to the main field is called as transplantation. So, see children here, now I will play a video, you can observe it, how the process of transplanting is done. See children here, what the farmer is doing, he is uh, collecting all the plantlets, he kept it on the machine, transplanter it is and without the help of uh, labor from the nursery, he took this uh, plantlets, he alone can do it and it is also a not time consuming process. So, that they can do the transplantation very easily. Have you understood children? Next children, after transplantation process has been done, continuously we are growing the crops. So, the land will be losing its fertility. If it has lost its fertility, we should have to add something, nutrients to be added to the land so that it can increase its productivity. So, what has to be added? Either manures or fertilizers. See the first slide, this is manure. It is nothing but the organic farm. So, in an uh, organic way, we are giving a manure to the plants so that they will be taking the nutrients from that. Next one, you can see manure spreader is there. This is a machine, manure is kept, which will be sp spreading this uh, manure throughout the agricultural field. So, you might have seen in your villages, children, whatever the vegetables, uh, peels are there, whatever the waste food is there, all that what you will do, you will dump it in a place, isn't it so? So, after dumping it, you leave it for some days. Then after that, they will be mixing this and that they will be taking and putting it to the plants. So, this is called as compost. So, compost, manures, they are organic methods. Apart from the organic, they are using inorganic fertilizers. What are the inorganic fertilizers? Urea, single superphosphate, murate of potash, all these things. But they are not uh, of uh, good uh, nature. They make the soil either acidic or alkaline, which in turn may lead to the problems in future things. So, that is why organic manure is better than the inorganic fertilizers. Is it clear children? See here, this is uh, a fertilizer bag which is having nitrogen, phosphorus and potash. And how these fertilizers are sprayed with the help of some uh, uh, machines, those machines are called as sprayers. And while spraying also, the farmers, they should be very precautious. Why? Because after spraying without washing the hands, if they directly eat the food or if they directly take the water, it may be poisonous. Then next, what is the next agricultural practice? Think about it. Irrigation. Irrigation means nothing but supplying water to the crop. So, water is very much essential to help in the growth of the plant. Why it is essential? Because the nutrients which are present in the soil will be mixing with the water and that water go to the roots and that roots will be absorbing these nutrients. So, there are different types of irrigation systems are there. Let us see here. Process of supplying water to crop plants growing in the fields by means of canals, reservoirs, wells, tube wells, etc. Water provides essential macronutrients of crop such as hydrogen and oxygen. And here, irrigation is of two types depending upon which type of crop it is grown and which type of soil it is. If sandy soils are there, more water has to be poured depending upon the soil and if depending upon the crop also. Some crops require more water, whereas some crops require less water. For example, you take paddy, it requires more water. 
whereas if you take some other plants so the, some crops they'll be requiring less water soil based irrigation crop based irrigation crop grown in sandy soil requires more irrigation than crop grown in clay soils crop based irrigation paddy crop is uh, transplanted in standing water requires more water supply as compared to wheat grams and cotton so what type of irrigation system has been followed in ancient days let us see now so different types of they used to use uh, animals help they used to take plants help they used to take with the help of these things they used to pump the water outside so let us see what are the ancient methods of irrigation ancient methods are also called as traditional methods what are those moat that is pulley system chain pump dhekli rahat etc so here in this a person is taking the water chain pump means here a pulley is been arranged and it is uh, drawn with the rope so this is chain pump system and this one is a uh, rahat system and this is a uh, dhekli system so these are the different methods which were used anciently previously that is but nowadays they are using different systems such as furrow irrigation and basin irrigation so this is basin irrigation children here in this just a land will be there and the water will be poured so here completely that particular field will be submerged with the water in this irrigation system what it will be crops will be present in particular rows and in between the crops the furrows will be present so water will be kept or poured in this furrows but you know that here day by day we are getting less amount of rainfall we are not getting underground water is also being uh, reduced to avoid the uh, excess use of water new methods have been introduced in the irrigation what are those they are sprinkler irrigation and drip irrigation drought prone areas where the amount of water is less where the scarcity of water is there in those areas these two systems are used what are those two systems sprinkler system of irrigation and drip irrigation this is drip irrigation i think uh, you have seen uh, pipes will be present horizontal pipes and the vertical pipes will be present and wherever the plant is there a small nozzle will be present and water will be coming out from that as a drop by drop this that is why it has got the name as drip irrigation and the second one you can see here is sprinkler irrigation here the water will be coming out of the pipe and a nozzle will be present that will be spreading the water throughout the field and it gives more time for absorption so these are the two methods of irrigation where availability of water if it is less also the crops can absorb them perfectly next one is what is meant by weed have you observed uh, in a paddy plant uh, or a paddy crops uh, or some other crops uh, apart from those crops some irregular plants some other plants will also be growing so these plants are all no use so this unwanted plants are called as weeds so weeds are nothing but the unwanted plants they will be competing with the crop plants for water sunlight etc and the process of removing the weeds is called as weeding so here see children so weeds weeds are nothing but the undesirable plants with the main crop competing for uh, water nutrients space light etc and the removal of weeds is called as weeding see here this is parthenium this is a weed and this has come from australia and uh, this weeds what happens uh, some of the pollen grains of this weeds also cause allergy and weeds can be removed by different methods biological methods chemical methods cultural methods and mechanical methods mechanical method is nothing but the manual weeding manual weeding means removing with the help of hand or with the help of some instruments such as harrow hoe etc but sometimes it has disadvantages also what are the disadvantages it takes more time and sometimes accidentally you will be removing the crop plant also so this is a thing and it involves more labor and uh, it includes uh, more amount of money has to be spent for removing these weeds so that is why manual weeding is having more disadvantages so that is why some chemicals can be used and the chemical which is useful for killing the weeds is called as a weedicide what is called as weedicide so here 24d 24d it is a weedicide which is useful for killing dicot weeds 24 dichlorophenoxyacetic acid 
It is a weedicide which is useful for killing dicot weeds. See children here, weedicide, it is nothing but a chemical which is used to destroy weeds without affecting the crop. What are the names here, examples they have given? Dalapon, Metachlor, Cesiazine are the examples of weedicides. See children here, which is used by the farmer, he himself is doing it is having two wheels, those wheels are coming on the sides of the crop plants. They are not damaging anything the, about these crops. They are just moving in the sides, furrows and like this he is removing the weeds and many labor are not required and the money is also saved, time is also saved. So nowadays uh, this type of weeders are used to remove the weeds. So, this is regarding about the weeding process. Is it clear children? Now, let us see here not only human beings, not only animals would get diseases, even plants also get diseases, isn't it? So, plants will also get diseases from virus, bacteria, fungus, etc. So, here some examples are given. See children what type of diseases will be occurring in plants. So, first one is ergot of bajra, in bajra the disease and the second one is leaf spot of rice, it is a disease in a rice plant. Next blight in paddy, it is also one of the disease. Next ticka disease in groundnut, see in this how leaves are having dots over it. And the next one is rust of wheat and blast of rice plants uh, which are suffering from different types of diseases. To overcome this one some chemicals are being sprayed to kill these insects. So, those chemicals which are useful for killing the insects or pests are called as insecticides or pesticides. And those uh, chemicals which are useful for killing the fungus they are called as fungicides. So, this is a fungicide, it is uh, spread over the uh, agricultural land and it kills uh, fungus and other things. Now the crop has come to the yield. In the different areas they will be celebrating festivals during the harvesting season. They are called as harvest festivals. So what is the harvest festival? Onam, Pongal, in uh, Sankranti, all these are the harvest festivals. During this what happens? The crop will be getting yield. Finally they will be cutting the crop, they will be getting the money. So, the farmers will be very happy, so they will be enjoying this with some festivals. So, the next step, final step is harvesting. So, here let us see what is meant by harvesting. Harvesting means nothing but cutting of crop after its maturation and how it is done? It is done by either manually or with the help of a machine. It is done manually by a sickle or by a machine called as harvester. And uh, after harvesting, what they will be doing means they will be separating the grains from the chaff. This process is called as threshing. And threshing it is done by a machine called as combine. And this combine, it is uh, both the harvester and thresher. Is it clear children? So here, after threshing, what process is done? Winnowing. Harvesting it is done by sickle or harvester. And you can see in the last one that is harvesting is done on the roads. You might have seen in your villages also, but it is very dangerous. Why? Because sometimes accidents may occur. So, try to avoid this type of harvesting on roads and uh, this process is threshing and I said that separating the grains from the chaff is called as threshing and this process is called as winnowing. Uh, they will be separating the light weighted grains and uh, more weighted grains and they will be collecting the grain. After collecting the grain, they will dry it. They will dry it in the field itself for 2 to 3 days and after 2 to 3 days they will be either putting it in the gunny bags or uh, they will be putting at a home some they will be using it or sometimes they will be using the seeds which are having good quality for the future uh, seeds purpose. So all these things they will be doing. So but we are using it throughout the season then how it is possible? It is possible by proper storage. After drying, after uh, uh, collecting them in the gunny bags, they have to be stored in particular places. So, next step is storage. Now, if proper it is not managed, it is again damaged with virus, bacteria, rats, birds, etc. So, to avoid that one, what has to be done? Properly, they have to be stored. 
Storage of grains. After threshing, grains are dried in sun and then packed. Farmers store the food grains in jute bags or metallic bins. Large scale storage is done in silos and granaries and godowns also. At domestic level, dried neem leaves are also used. So these are silos children. Here, big big granaries where uh, uh, you can uh, store the food grains. And uh, this is a cold storage unit. And in the coal storage unit, uh, and these are godowns, you might have seen FCI godowns, Food Corporation of India godowns, where uh, rice, uh, wheat, uh, pulses, they will be stored. So, this is regarding about uh, different types of agricultural practices. Have you understood children? So, now go through the lesson once, read the lesson once and uh, try to complete the assignment. Improve your learning. What are the advantages of ploughing? What is natural manure and how it is prepared and give examples. Next one is what are the types of irrigation systems used in drought prone areas where water scarcity is there. Okay. Next one. Spraying of overdose of pesticides is harmful or useful. Draw a flow chart from ploughing to yielding in paddy crop. From ploughing process till yielding process, what are the steps involved? Write down that in a flow chart. Yes, children, I think you have understood the lesson. Okay, let us meet in the next session of the digital class. Till then, bye children. Thank you. आचलूलम्मा नेरुगा प्रति इंटी गड़पा चेरगा मी भवितके भरोसा दूर दर्शन मेदिकगा